Today we're going to cover one of the most important parts of cyber defense, threat intelligence. How you can collect it, how you can use it, and I'll even show you how to set up a threat intelligence platform for free in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, John Hubbard here, cyber defense instructor, author, and curriculum lead at the SANS Institute. On this channel, we make learning complex cybersecurity concepts simple to help you protect yourself and your organization. I make videos regularly, so be sure to hit subscribe and notify so you don't miss any of my releases coming out. Today, the topic is threat intelligence, what it is, why you need it, an example of how you might use it, and how to get started with the MISP threat intelligence platform in a painless, easy way in just a few minutes. So to kick it off, to be successful in threat intelligence, there's really three main ingredients that you're going to need. And that is one, a set of intelligence requirements, two, a threat model, and three, a way to collect and manage your threat intelligence or some kind of collection management framework and probably a threat intelligence platform to organize all that data. In this video, we're gonna to touch a little bit on all three, but we're gonna focus on the data management aspect of the third part using a threat intelligence platform that you can download and use for free. And we're gonna show you how to do that. First, the requirements. If you're building a threat intel team or function of of some sort, those on the team need to know what questions they're trying to answer. They're not just gonna be aimlessly collecting any bits of data that they can find anywhere on the internet. That's a waste of time and money. As a SOC or someone working with a SOC, you should give as clear directions as possible to your threat intelligence analysts so they know what they're looking for. An example could be something that's a really broad question like, which threat groups are most likely to affect our company? Or a tightly scoped question like, which TTPs does APT1 use during a targeted attack? Either way, both of those are important questions for you to know, and we'll get to the level of threat intelligence here in a second. The second required piece of threat intelligence is a threat model. And at its core, a threat model is just kind of trying to predict what an attacker that has an interest in your organization is going to try to do to accomplish that attack. A threat is anything that has a capability, opportunity, and intent to do harm. We're trying to marry a real world external perspective of who the threats are with an internal facing perspective of what do we have that might get attacked or affected by a cyber attacker. Then we need a collection management framework. For threat intelligence teams, this is all about understanding the data sources that you have. Where are you getting your data and what types of data information do those sources give you? So let's say you have a subscription to VirusTotal. VirusTotal has a whole bunch of information, including IP addresses and domain names and hash values and the connections between those items. So in your collection management framework, you would want to know we have VirusTotal and VirusTotal is a place we can go for those types of data. You also need a place to store all that information because we can conceivably have an infinite list of hash values and IP addresses and domain names because there's no limit on how many of those can exist. So we need a threat intelligence platform that can store all of that data and show us the connections between those bits of information as we see them over time. That's what the threat intelligence platform does for us. There are different types of threat intelligence. When you're collecting threat intelligence, it's important to kind of mentally place the bits of information you're collecting at maybe three different layers. And these are often referred to as the strategic layer, which is the highest level of threat intelligence. It tells you about the threat landscape and the broad strokes about what's happening in the world and the environment with maybe the attackers that you're interested in. You might ask the question at this level, which business units or functions within our organization are most likely to be impacted by a cyber attack. The second level is the operational level, which is a medium level detail on threat group TTPs and trends. It might include goals for an attacker or the things that you've seen as you put together data points across multiple times you've seen those attackers. The third and the final level, which is very, very atomic, is the tactical level. This is when you're tracking specific IOCs and hash values and those things that we as SOC analysts tend to experience and work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are important, but there's more to threat intelligence than that. It's not just collecting those tactical bits of information. You need to build that bigger picture into the higher levels to be successful. You can start building your threat intelligence at any of these points, and you probably will simultaneously get information in at all three different levels. But the point is you do need to have all three levels to understand your attacker. 
To more explicitly state this, what is the point of threat intelligence? It's so that you can get ahead of your attacker. You can predict what they're going to do, you understand how they do it, and then you can take that information and customize and prioritize your defense against those types of attackers. Spending money to protect against an attack that's not gonna happen to you is just not a good use of your time or your money, and threat intelligence helps make sure you don't do that and just spend your money in the best possible way. Taking this out of the cyber context for a moment, let's say you want to defend your house and and you think about how could I set up a house defense system? You could install lasers, you could put metal plates over your windows, you could get security guards to guard around the whole perimeter. But unless you have a reason to think that someone is going to attack you and that you need that level of security, it's a giant waste of money and time, right? And so that gets back to the threat model. Most people for their house would have a threat model of, I'm not anyone special, I just want to protect against random attacks. And therefore we spent a little bit of money, maybe we get a security system, and that's good enough. We match the level of risk with the level of spending against the attackers we expect to see, which is just maybe random crime. So assuming you're going to be tracking threat intelligence, you're going to be getting a lot of data and you need a place to put all of that data. And that's where the threat intelligence platform comes in. So let's dive into using and installing a threat intelligence platform. Okay, so let's start off here. I just have a Linux machine. It's a virtual machine and I have Docker installed. I'm not going to go into the detail on how to install Docker, but you can look it up. I'll put a link in the description for how to do that. The next step, once you have Docker running and installed is to go to GitHub and I'll put this link in the description as well to the cool acid Docker misp repo. And we have to clone this repo. So click copy open up your terminal, pick whatever folder you want to clone it into, git, clone, paste, enter. I've already done it, so mine is already there. Then you're going to change into that folder and this is where the magic happens. Watch this. Docker, spell it right, compose up, enter, done. That's it. Now what's gonna happen at this point on your end? I've already downloaded the files, but for the first time you run this, there will be some large downloads that need to occur. Once those container images download, then you're going to see a bunch of information like this as MISP spins up. When this is done, which will take maybe a couple minutes, depends on the speed of your computer, you will have a fully functioning copy of MISP. Once it looks roughly like this, go back to your browser, and then type in HTTPS colon slash slash localhost and go there. Boom, you got MISP. It's that easy. Docker is incredible. Okay, so for here, I have already created myself a name and password here. The default for this is admin at admin.test and then you log in with the password admin. When you first log in with that, the first screen you're gonna see, I've already done this part, is it will make you change the password to something long and complex. Pick something, type it in, hit enter, you're good to go. Then you may see a bar at the top that says something like, MISP is not available right now. It's just saying you as an admin can only see it. It wouldn't be available to the whole team yet. Don't worry about that, we're just testing it out. All right, this is the home page of MISP. It is basically empty. I have one thing entered in here ahead of time. When you look at this first page, yours will be blank, and this is the list of all the events that you are entering into MISP. You're now looking at a blank screen. Let's say you come into work roughly at the end of May uh, 2021, and you go to bleepingcomputer.com, looking through the things. Ooh, US seizes domain used by APT29 in recent US aid phishing attacks. That sounds like an event we want to track. Now, if you read through this article, it'll eventually link you out to this Microsoft website. I'm going to put this link in the description as well. Let's say we want to enter this into MISP as an event. Here's how we do it. I'm going to go to add event. I'm going to just paste in the same title as the thing. It doesn't matter. You can pick whatever you want. And then down here at the bottom of this Microsoft article, there are a whole bunch of indicators and I'm going to copy those and hit submit here. And what we've got is a brand new event with no attributes in it yet. We have to fill those out. So how do we do that? We get on to the bottom. The easiest way to get stuff into MISP is to just dump a giant list of IOCs, right? That tactical level threat intelligence. Now, this looks like a mess, but shockingly, MISP is really good at sorting stuff out with this tool a lot of the time. So I'm just gonna try this out, hit submit. Look at that, it worked. It's not perfect, right? We have a couple email addresses, we have some hash, it automatically detects the, these are SHA-256. We have IP addresses, those are destinations, so those are good. So the only thing we maybe change here is 
payload delivery, network activity, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, these were phishing emails, so you probably could actually just leave those right there. Hit submit. Boom, we've done it. We have our first event in our MISP platform, in a threat intelligence platform we just set up. Now, notice they aren't here yet, right? We have to refresh this page before it shows up. It says the event view is outdated. Hit refresh. Boom, there we go. So here's our events. Now what's interesting about this and where you can see the value of a threat intelligence platform is that other event that I pre-populated into MISP is event ID number one. And when we look at this event that we just created, this shows these IP addresses here have been seen in another event. So let's say yesterday we noticed there was some odd activity to this IP address, we put it in. Today we see this article, we put that in. Now MISP is telling us Whatever you just put in yesterday and saw is now what you just put in as part of this APT29 attack. You should probably check that out. You can see this in a visual way if you go up to view correlation graph and it will tell you, hey, event ID one and event ID two both have these same IP address attributes. I can zoom in a little bit there. And so we're starting to already make connections where we might have not noticed it before if we didn't have a threat intelligence platform telling us you've seen these things more than once. That is the idea of a threat intelligence platform, but not just on two events. You would be doing this for all of time for your SOC. When you finish up a case after an incident response, you would put the information from that into a MISP event, and you would have that tracked here. And anytime you saw those same IOCs again, maybe in another attack a month later, MISP would be ready to tell you about it. The other cool thing, MISP can export all of the IOCs and all of the events into lists to your IDS, to your SIM, and to other things so that it can track and look for those items to appear in any of the logs or in any of the network traffic you're recording with those tools as well. Awesome, awesome tool here. So feel free to play around with this. The way that Docker works is this is a fully functioning version of MISP. You can take it down whenever you're done with it, throw it out, get rid of it if that's what you want to do. In here, there is an administration setting page. If you want to look through all of this stuff, there's a whole bunch of information you can go through here and see what MISP does. This is like just touching the surface of what MISP does in terms of functionality. You can go way, way deeper. Okay, you want to turn off MISP. What do you do? You're looking at this, all you have to do, Control C. You wait for this to say done, you'll get a terminal back. There it is. It's done. If you want to make sure those Docker containers are not running anymore, you can type Docker PS and it will say, hmm, there's a few things running. Those aren't actually the MISP containers. This is other Docker containers I'm just running right now. That's how you list all the containers that are running. So MISP is completely shut down here. If you want to bring it back up, type Docker compose up, hit enter. It'll jump right back to where you were. The events will still be there that you entered. It does persist the data but the servers and the services turn off when you take the containers down. It's kind of like running a mini virtual machine, but it's just confined to the processes that are required to run MISP. So really cool stuff here. You can see it has a few different containers all stringed together that work in concert to bring up the service, brings it into existence, then takes it down, throws it away. What threat intelligence platform does your team use? Do you have one that you love? Do you have one that you hate? Is this something that's totally new to you? Let me know in the comments. If this video was helpful to you, do me a quick favor and click the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel out by telling me what topics you're interested in so I can make more videos on them. There it is, threat intelligence, threat intelligence platforms, what they are, why you need them. Hopefully this gave you a jump start on understanding what threat intelligence is and what it can do for your team and how you can start to collect it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.